Hello everyone, this will be a guide on how to use the Windows version of my PPPON GUI. First thing that you want to do is get NPCAP installed. You can go here to NPCAP, it will be linked in the description of the video, and download the latest version. After you've downloaded it, you go ahead and install it. Can agree and then leave these these options as they are and just install it and wait for it to finish installing after it's done installing you can just click next and finish then you can go back and then you can go to my github and download the latest version of the gui it will be linked in the description for this guide we'll be using windows 10 dash 11 you can just download it and then after you've downloaded it you can unpack it after you've unpacked it you're gonna get a folder you can go ahead and open the folder here you'll find the GUI pipipon tinker what you want to do next is connect your PS4 and PC with an Ethernet cable to, to each other and then you can open the, G the GUI Occasionally what you'll see happen is a little blue window will open and it will be Microsoft complaining that it's an unknown app. You can just press on more info and then just run it. Once you get it opened up, usually the select interface will be will be blank. You need to do is select your interface. It will be your Ethernet port. If you don't know its name from the drop down and options, what you can do is go to open network settings and there you'll find your Ethernet and Wi-Fi adapters. What you can do is look at the one that is your Ethernet. So I know this is my Ethernet port 1 and that has my active network on it. And this is Ethernet port 2. It will be what I use to run PPPON on. If you have an Intel CPU, Intel chipset, what you have it named as is something like Intel R Ethernet or something similar. If you're on a fancier motherboard, it, might, it may say something like Asus GBE, LAN Ethernet adapter or something similar. It will just depend on your motherboard. If you're using a USB to Ethernet adapter for this. It will have usually the name of the adapter like TP-Link, USB, something, something. And you just need to find the name and after you select it, next thing you do is you look at your firmware. I'm on 11.00 so that's what I'll leave it as. But if you are on let's say 9.9.60 you can just set it to that leave the pppon version as c++ that's the best one to use the options here are all optional uh, only the custom ipv6 option is is relevant if you only if you have issues at all and it will be covered at the end of the video what you want to do next is grab a USB drive and format it to either XFAT or FAT32. After you've done that, you can go into the Goldhen and VTX folder and grab the payload for your firmware. VTX options mean that you'll be using HEN VTX, not Goldhen. And if there isn't Goldhen for your firmware, then that's just what you've got. In the subfolders, you'll find some folders with the gold, different gold hand releases. You can go in and grab the goldhand.bin file, copy it, and then go to your USB drive and paste it there. It just needs to be in the root of the USB drive. After that, you can just take it out and plug it into the PS4. After you've plugged in the USB into your PS4, you can go ahead and go to it and what you want to do here is set up the connection first what you will do is go into settings then go to network then set up an internet connection here you choose use a, la use a LAN cable then go to custom In IP address settings, you're going to pick PPPoE. And what you want to just do is set the user ID and password as G. 
just the letter G is fine. It's the fastest thing because it's the first letter that highlights and it just works. For DNS settings, you can just leave it as automatic. MTU settings, automatic. Proxy server, do not use. And once you're here, what you can do is you can press on run pawn. A CMD window will open and if, you're, if you've if you got waiting for Paddy, then it's all going well. What you should do next is test the internet connection and it should start. As it loads, we'll go through different stages, just give it some time. Some relevant things are that if at stage 1 or stage 2 your console crashes, at the end of the video I'm going to show you what settings you need to change so that you can get past that. Here as you see, at one point it will be scanning for corrupted object. Here it will retry a few times and you just need to let it do its thing. It retries automatically. On the PS4 screen, you see cannot connect to network and other things. That is all completely fine. Even the failed internet connection is completely fine. The only thing you need is to gain an IP address. So after you give it some time and then three tries. Occasionally sound from the PS4 may stop or glitch and that's completely fine. And as it retries a few times, at one point you'll get it or just in case if the console ends up crashing, just go to the end of the video, you see what you need to change to fix it. It's related to the custom IPv6 option. Additionally, the other three options above it are, are related to getting the retries going through so instead of it retrying and failing with changing the numbers here and here and the ma mainly corrupt num and spray num you can get it to go through faster and here it is it's found a corrupted object at stage 2 it may also crash your console and in that case again just look at what you need to do at the end of the video for the custom ipv6 options once it goes through, it will load up and say done. On your PS4 it will say that it successfully transferred the payload to the HDD and Goldhen will be loaded. In this case it's already loaded. So, about what to do if your console crashes at stage 1 or stage 2 and it just keeps crashing or, or it keeps retrying endlessly. What you should do here is and I'm going to leave a link to this in, in the description too. What you should do is go to the troubleshooting page. Here there are there are instructions for what to do for issues of, of every stage. It will be linked in the description. And mainly the main issue that you may see is an IPv6 issue. In this case you can just copy the 4141 here. And then paste it into the custom IPv6 box. And after you run it you see that it's been set as the new IPv6, this being the main. Uh... After doing that, just run it again and let it do its thing. It will retry a few times and you should be successful. If you have any further issues, I do plan on making a whole a video on this page itself where I'll explain all the troubleshooting for every stage and every step of how to fix certain issues beyond just crashing of the IPv6. Thank you for watching and good luck.